The last one, I'm going to leave y'all alone. I know some of y'all shook in y'all boots from this. <laughs> this is too much. It's too heavy for y'all. But like I told y'all before, I don't care. This is something totally different over here. Completely. The last one, the false hope. What's the false hope? I kind of hit on it earlier. The church is supposed to be there for the community. It's supposed to be a cornerstone for the community. Do you realize that's where the civil rights movement was built? Inside of the black church. There's no hope in a lot of these buildings. I'm not even calling them church because they're buildings. Because the spirit is missing. Because the right message of God is not there. It's all about this. And not giving back to the community around them. How you got people in the neighborhoods, around the church, starving. And you got people showing up to church every Sunday and they Sunday's best, looking their best, not doing a damn thing for anybody around them in their neighborhood. That's why even down here in Florida, I haven't even found a church yet because I'm really selective. I got to make sure that the church is not brainwashed. They speaking real facts and real truth. So I still attend my church back home in Nashville. Via YouTube, via Facebook, because I know my pastors are real. My pastor said something that was so real not too long ago. He said, I'm about that action. I'm not about all that talking. I'm getting outside and getting some things done. He does. Helps the community. Our church is heavily involved in the community, heavy involved, on property in the community, off affordable housing in the community, preach real doctrine about the Nubians in the Bible, that's real hope. But when you have churches that's collecting all the money in, it ain't nothing going out to the people or the community. I can't get a plate of food from the church anymore. Remember how you had two Sundays? You have a visiting church come over. You got the big meal you cook in between services, homecoming and things of that nature. A lot of that's in the past. And a lot of these black churches need to bring that back. Because they used to feed the whole community during these times. And they don't do that anymore. Bring that back, black churches. We need hope, especially now. The black pastors, the black church will be on the forefront of trying to stop the violence and all this bullshit going on in our neighborhoods. But a lot of them scared to get out there in the streets themselves. And that's why I said my pastor back home, he a real one. He from the block. He still goes to the block. And gives back. If we want our black youth coming back to the black church, the black cornerstone of our communities, we need to stop letting the false prophets lead the pulpit, lead the church, stop teaching the false doctrines, tell the truth about who Jesus really was and what he looked like. They told you revelations, didn't they? Hair like white wool. Why did they say wool? You saw how curly and knotted wool is? Any other type of texture. Why wool? Why did the feet have to get described as finished bronze out of a furnace? You know how dark that is? That's your image right there. That's your truth. If you know how to study the genealogy, that's your truth. If you go look at Tayra and his folks, the Cushites, the Chaldeans, preach that. And last but not least, you got to give back to the community. That should be a no-brainer. Those three things will bring our young black folks back to the church. Thank you for tuning in. God bless. One team.